We are now going to look at our panels in the design. Remember, panels are these objects over here, and we can always adjust what panels we have by resetting our current workspace or selecting a new workspace. You can also bring up additional panels through the window menu. All of these panels can be undocked and moved. You can float your panels if you would rather do that. You can expand your panels to a full view or shrink them to a icon view. And whenever you move things around, you can reset. One of the most important panels is the properties panel. From here you can change color, stroke, fill, type, paragraph styles, object styles, alignment, text wrap, basically everything you'd want to do. It is contextual, so as you change your tools, your properties panel changes. And without anything selected, you can even change your document, both margins and columns. In some cases, like the stroke, you have these objects you can change, but if you click on the stroke, you can access additional options to change. Many of the items in the Properties panel are in other panels. For example, there's a separate Stroke panel. Next is the Pages panel. This is where you can add, move, or delete pages. Whatever page you have selected is in blue. The master pages are where you add template items like page numbers. Down here are your working pages where you design. The final panel open by default in Essentials is the CC Libraries. This panel lets you store colors, images, logos, paragraph styles, etc. to be used across the Adobe Suite. If you are working on a design project, the CC Library panel is a great work efficiency. There are other panels that you might want to open. For example, the Links panel. The Links panel gives you information about all the links you have in your document. If you're going to the print press, this is pretty important. If you click on a link, you're going to get all sorts of information about your format, your color space, and your size. These bottom icons allow you to relink the content or jump to that link in the document. You can also control click on any link and edit it with one of the other Adobe programs. We'll talk more about links when we get into our photo unit. The next set of panels are under the color menu. This group includes color, gradient, and swatches. With your color, you can always choose different color modes to work in. For example, CMYK is cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, and RGB which is your screen color or online color is red, green, and blue. It always appears a bit lighter because it has that white additive. Typically, you would just be working with CMYK if you are printing and RGB if you're going online. Here you can create your own colors and then move those colors into the swatches panel. Once you have a color added to your swatches panel, you've now added a tint option that you can change. You also have that up here in the color panel. If I have a swatch here, I can double click it, rename the color, make additional changes to it. If you feel like maybe you're not seeing all of your swatches, it's entirely possible that you've selected one of these bottom options at some point. And so you want to make sure that you have all swatches selected. The final panel is the effects panel. So the effects panel allows you to work with things like transparencies, 
layer modes, and effects on objects. So for example, I'm going to select this black and I'm going to change my color mode. And you can see as I change my color mode, the interaction between those two shapes change. I can also access effects like drop shadows, inner glows, and that is our panel overview. <laughs>